Hi there, we're in the Mudgee area, about three and a half hours northwest of Sydney. It's a great little place, it's got about 9,000 people in it. Wine was originally planted back here in the 1850s and ever since then it's been growing. There's now four and a half thousand hectares of wine planted in the areas. By comparison, the Hunter Valley has 4,700 hectares, so it's almost the same size. However, here in Mudgee there's only 40 cellar doors to choose from, which I think is great because it just makes it easier to get around to them all. So, let's take a look at some of them, shall we? So we've just finished our visit to Thumbprint Winery in Mudgee. Their winemaker is the Lowe family and they're doing a pretty good job. They've got a Chardonnay Sauv Blanc which is quite nice and for $10 is well worth it. Um, another Chardonnay and again that's $10 well worth it. They've got an 07 Late Harvest Chardonnay which is something a bit different. They desperately tried for botrytis. They were wrapping things in plastic to try and get the humidity up but it was a drought so they had no luck so they went with a late harvest. It's very tasty and $15. Um, their 2005 Cab Sav, again, spicy, lovely flavours, $15, an absolute bargain. Um, and they've got two Shirazes, which uh, the 07 needs to go down for a bit longer, but it has great potential, and the 05 is an easy, light drinking wine, which is highly enjoyable. Um, all in all, I thought this vineyard was pretty good, had some pretty good wines, and um, a lovely lady to have a chat to about what goes on around here. So that was Thumbprint Winery. Yeah. Hi, we're at 1838 Wines in Mudgee, uh, mainly focusing on reds, they don't do any whites here, in fact they probably tend to do more olives than they do wines, there's only four kind of wine varieties and only four acres under vine. A couple of unusual uh, names, they have one called a Fandango and then they have the Durif, which is not the most common kind of wine around. Uh, and a Shiraz and a Merlot. The Fandango is a Merlot Shiraz blend. Uh, they have an 07 and 08. They are winning some awards for it. Uh, I thought the 07 had quite a bit of a tart ending and not a lot of complexity. The 08, very purple, very strong. Uh, not a bad wine. Uh, I guess the issue is at $24, uh, I, I wouldn't be paying for it, basically. Um, they're straight Merlot, 06 Merlot, $27. Probably, you know, uh, good as Merlots go. Um, at $27, I'm sort of thinking, again, a bit overpriced. In fact, I tend to find this 1838 wines, uh, I thought were all a little bit pricey for what they are. Uh, their Shiraz was a good Shiraz. Uh, about at $32, uh, it's no longer, you know, a value for money Shiraz. Had a uh, good length, good palate, good drinking now sort of thing, not something you'd put down. Um, and the Durif had good complexity, really strong tannins at the end. Uh, probably something you'd sell her for a while. But uh, what's the Durif? $26. Take it or leave it. Personally, I'd leave it. Okay, well, we've just done the Willow Lane in Mudgee. Uh, they have uh, seven different wines, a uh, number of whites, rose, a number of reds. Uh, um, <clears throat> I won't go through everything with you, uh, but the I'll just honourable mentions, I guess. The 2009 Sauv Blanc is $22, has quite a fruity nose. Um, I think it was uh, quite a well developed Sauv Blanc, and I'd give it a, uh, a value for money at $22. Um, they had a 2007 Laura Chardonnay named after one of their granddaughters. $19.50 is the price of it. It is a very nice Chardonnay. It uh, spent uh, eight months on oak barrels. 50% um, of it was put on the barrels. Uh, half of those barrels were French, half of them were American. You definitely get a very oaky, buttery kind of nose when it first comes out at you to the point that you get scared and think, oh, that's a bit too much. But the flavour doesn't fl follow through with that but you get this really beautiful sort of oaky, long finish. So I think it's very well developed, very well balanced. Uh, and if you like your oak, but don't want it overpowering, this is a good one to get, $19.50 as I said. Um, the rosé, we're not really big on rosés, but I always try them, and most of the time they're too sweet. If you're looking for a slightly dry rosé, these guys have uh, um, hit the uh, nail on the head. It's made out of a Merlot. 
um, and has a nice dry sort of finish to it. Uh, generally, I think it's it's pretty good. Uh, only fifteen dollars, so once you add on the the price, of fifteen dollars, you're definitely talking value for money for their flavour. Uh, Merlot Cabernet, quite nice, but won't go into that that much because uh, I did like the Timothy uh, Premium Shiraz. Good name that named after their grandson. Uh, grown all locally here in their own vineyards. Some of these other things are sourced in the Mudgee area, but not their own vineyard. Uh, a great long palate. Loved it. Had to, uh, If you just take one sip and then just wait for a while, you get these fantastic chocolates and plums, something sort of coming through in the end. Just lasted forever. $25. Uh, definitely worth it if you can pick it up for $25. And finally, their Sweet Grace Botrytis Semillon Serve Blanc. A Botrytis Semillon Serve Blanc. Not that common. Uh, done a good job of that as well. $27. I would have said that's slightly overpriced, but uh, Kat really liked it, so we're going to have one with dessert tonight. We have just been to the Red Clay Vineyard in Mudgee, a very small, very simple sort of family-run kind of place. Lovely man at the cellar door who's the winemaker. They have a limited range, only do one Chardonnay and uh, three Reds. Uh, of those, I'd didn't try the Chardonnay today, just, you know, wrong weather for it, sorry. But I uh, was impressed, very impressed by the Shiraz. Only list priced at $14, so I, I think he could even get away with putting that up a bit. It had some great complexity and a really long palate, so I was really impressed with it. And then I sort of said, okay, I'll take one, and they decided to knock it down to $10 for me. So there you go. He was obviously in a jovial mood. And I must say, having a jovial mood kind of person behind the cellar door counter uh, just makes the whole experience of going to a cellar door so much more enjoyable. So uh, I think it's it, it bodes well uh, for the company as a whole when you have someone back there who, uh, who knows what they're doing, is passionate about it, and can tell a funny story like this guy could. So cellar doors for this guy's excellent. I have just been to the secret garden winery and um, left very very quickly. When we walked in we were given one glass between us without there being a question as to who was the driver. Uh, not that there is, both of us spit so that we can appreciate the flavour of each wine. Um, then I, when, asked, when I asked for a spittoon I was basically told to stick my head under a tap um, and the gentleman was very abrupt and very unhelpful and definitely put me on my defensive so that I left after tasting one glass, which meant for him no sales. I don't know whether this was a judgment made because we're driving in a four-wheel drive camper van or whether he's just a grumpy old man, but it definitely wasn't a pleasant experience. And uh, like I mentioned with the Taste of Conandra experience, it's far better if you can taste a lot of wines in one location. Um, it's a lot more comfortable. Uh...